Let's learn about glycolysis pathway. Basically, it is breaking down of glucose to generate energy. At the end, it converts glucose to pyruvate. So, let us learn how it happens. So, glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate in the first step. For this reaction, as you can see, one phosphate is added. So, this phosphate comes from ATP, adenosine triphosphate which is then converted to adenosine diphosphate. So, one phosphate is transferred from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and this reaction takes place because of hexokinase which is also known as glucokinase. Kinase is responsible for addition of phosphate group. So let us study the structure of glucose. There are six carbons in glucose. So we are drawing cyclical structure of glucose here. So in the ring there are 5 carbons and the 6th carbon is outside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the 6th one is CH2OH. This is the cyclical structure of glucose. So glucose 6-phosphate structure is the phosphate is attached to the 6th carbon of the glucose. So, sixth carbon is over here where now there will be addition of phosphate group. From where this phosphate group has come? It has come from ATP. So, one phosphate is transferred to the glucose and ATP becomes ADP. So, this is an investment of energy. ATP is invested in for breaking down of glucose. Now glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose also has 6 carbons in it. So it is just, there is no addition of any molecule into it. New atoms or molecules are not added. It is just isomerization reaction and that takes place because of the phosphoglucose isomerase. So this is the structure of fructose in which first carbon is not included in the ring structure, it is outside unlike glucose. So first carbon and sixth carbon are outside the ring structure. First carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon and the sixth carbon. The phosphate group is attached to the sixth carbon of the fructose. That's why it is called as fructose 6 phosphate. Now the next step is 
fructose six phosphate is converted to fructose one six bisphosphate. It is also known as fructose one six diphosphate or fructose one six bisphosphate, where one more phosphate group is attached to the fructose six phosphate. So obviously, what will be the change in the structure? Earlier in the fructose structure, the phosphate group was attached to the sixth carbon. Now one more phosphate group will be attached to the first carbon. And the enzyme that is responsible for this is phosphofructokinase. Again, why kinase? Because kinase is responsible for addition of phosphate group. So let us draw the structure of fructose one six bisphosphate. So this is the first carbon to which a phosphate is attached. You can see in the earlier structure. To the first carbon, there was no phosphate attached. So now there are two phosphate groups attached to the first carbon and the sixth carbon. It is fructose one six bisphosphate. Now this molecule. Will be broken down into two molecules. Now this has got how many carbons? Is it has got six carbons. So it will be broken down into two molecules having three carbons, and that takes place with the help of aldolase enzyme. So aldolase will break down fructose one six bisphosphate into glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So let us see how the structure is broken down. So first three carbon becomes dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and last three carbon becomes glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Let's learn the structure of dihydroxyacetone phosphate first. So now, how many carbons are there? There are three carbons. It is dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So there are two hydroxy groups attached to it, and the other structure is glyceraldehyde three phosphate. This also has got three carbons to it. The phosphate group is attached to the third carbon, so it is called as glyceraldehyde three phosphate, and it is aldehyde. So C double bond O H group is there. So let us move ahead. So fructose one six biphosphate is broken down to glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Now we have two molecules having three carbon structures, which is broken down from glucose, which has got six carbon atoms in it. So now this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is. 
undergoes the process of isomerization with the help of triose phosphate isomerase and it gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so now we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so now by isomerization we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate it is aldehyde so there is c double bond oh group and phosphate group is attached to the third carbon and this reaction takes place with the help of triose phosphate isomerase why triose because there are three carbons now glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate there is addition of 2 pi molecules why 2 pi because there are two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so one phosphate molecule will get attached to one glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this reaction takes place with the help of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase that is the enzyme So what do you understand by dehydrogenase? If you look at the reaction of NAD plus and NADH H plus, so it is taking out hydrogen from the reaction and it results into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now what do we understand by 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate? That means there are going to be two phosphate molecules, one at the first carbon attached and one at the third carbon. So it is a glycerate molecule with phosphate attached to the first carbon and the third carbon. first carbon, third carbon. There are two phosphates attached to the glycerate molecule. When it is salt of acid, it becomes 8. So it is glyceric acid to which two phosphate groups are attached. This is then converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. How will it get converted to 3-phosphoglycerate? Now there was one phosphate at the first carbon that was attached. It will be removed and will be given to what? It will be given to ADP molecule. So as there are two molecules of phosphate, two ADP molecules will get two phosphate groups and will result into two ATPs. And the product will be 3-phosphoglycerate, two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. The reaction takes place with the help of phosphoglycerate kinase. Now let us move ahead. Now the phosphate group that is attached to the third carbon will now be shifted to the second carbon. That molecule is called as 2-phosphoglycerate. And this reaction will be catalyzed by phosphoglycerate mutase. And it is a reversible reaction. So this is the structure of 2-phosphoglycerate where phosphate group is attached to the second carbon. In 3-phosphoglycerate it is attached to the third carbon. In 2-phosphoglycerate it is attached to the second carbon.
now there is a dehydration process that occurs here that means water molecule is taken out from two phosphoglycerate so it will result into phosphoenol pyruvate and the enzyme that is responsible for this for catalysis of this reaction is enolase So once the water molecule comes out from 2 phosphoglycerate then we get phosphoenol pyruvate Let us look at the structure of phosphoenol pyruvate So it is CH2 double bond O now as water molecule has come out it is dehydration reaction so there is double bond o in it that is the structure of phosphoenol pyruvate now to the phosphoenol pyruvate if phosphate is taken out as there are two molecules two adp molecules will get two phosphate molecules out of it with the help of pyruvate kinase enzyme and then pyruvate is generated with the help of it here so this is the structure of the pyruvate which is three carbon compound and glucose is broken down to pyruvate this is the glycolysis reaction so this is the overall reaction in which first five reaction are atp investment and next reactions are atp earning reactions